What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. Today I'd like to give you guys my personal review of Zubuntu 13.10 beta 1. For those of you who like vanilla distro installs and reviews, this will not be for you. This is not how the install looks by default. I have tweaked it uh, to my liking. I have installed a lot of my personal favorite applications and removed anything I did not like. So for those of you who kind of want that, there's a lot of people out there doing those types of reviews as we speak, and they're doing them very, very well. I want to show you kind of my personal take on it after I've installed it on my hardware, configured it to my liking, and what I think about it. Now this is a beta release, so I'm not going to be too hard on it in terms of stability, although once it reaches beta, it should be fairly stable, and it has been for the most part. Um, so I'm not going to really knock off too many points there. I'm going to give you guys uh, my thoughts on it, who I think should be using this distribution, and why. So first and foremost, uh, in terms of the interface, of course, it's Zubuntu, so we get XFCE. It's at version 4.10, so this is not the newest development uh, release of XFCE, which should be 4.12. I believe that 4.12 should have been re released back in May, but there were some things that held it up and it's still not out yet. So for those of you who have used XFCE 4.10, either on Zubuntu or another distribution, this is gonna be really, really familiar for you. So it'll be a plus if you want something that's familiar and easy to use. If you've used XFCE 4.10, no surprises here. There's only been a couple of tweaks and we will get into those. So some of the highlights here, we have a tool for changing your theme colors easily. They're calling it GTK Theme Config. It's been added to the repositories and it's going to be installed by default in the final release. I've gone ahead and actually installed that so I can show you guys what that is. If we come into the settings panel here and go to theme configuration, it's going to pop up this tool. This is what they're talking about. So you can tweak a lot of the panel backgrounds, custom menu colors. It's a fairly nice a way to actually change a lot of these things. So let's turn that on. We'll hit apply. So, and there's a nice little revert option where it'll go back to the default. So that's the theme configuration tool. What else here? We also have a new version of XFCE4 settings uh, that brings other things like a new dialog to set up your display. We go back here into settings. If we come down to display, you've got this nice tool now that comes up. We've got my current display being uh, shown here down at the bottom center of my screen. It shows my resolution 1920 by 1080, and you can change your various options. I only have one monitor set up right now, so if there were multiple monitors, of course, you'd have those options. Other than that, this is again very, very familiar. I've installed the NVIDIA proprietary driver using my method from Xorg Edger's PPA. If you're unfamiliar on how to do that, be sure to check out my videos. I do have a video uh, covering how to install them from a PPA, which is a really, really simple way to do it. Uh, oh, you know what? I should have showed this as well. I, I can't remember the last time I used XFCE, but you've got online account options here now. I'm not sure if this was in XFCE in uh, Zubuntu 13.04 but you do have it here in 13.10 so you can connect any of your online accounts of course Facebook Google and so on and so forth this particular installation as well as I believe uh, you know what 1304 would have had it as well as well as 12.10 but it does have a full disk encryption um, option so this particular installation I did include full disk encryption with LVM support which allows you to take snapshots of your system and be able to back up to those snapshots as well. And of course, when you boot this with full disk encryption, before it will actually mount the hard drive or give you access to that hard drive, it's going to ask you to uh, enter a um, security pass key. So after you enter that security pass key, it's going to continue the boot process into your login screen, and then you'll have to enter additionally your uh, login password as well. So those of you who have, say, laptops, and you may lose that laptop somewhere if you've got personal information on it, full disk encryption is a very nice option. It's not going to allow anyone to get in or even mount that hard drive until they enter in that pass key. So I did get some messages about disk encryption on some of my elementary OS videos. Elementary is based on Ubuntu 1204. 
And full disk encryption wasn't an option, I believe, until 12.10. So elementary does not have a full disk encryption option, which kind of stinks because I, I'm a big fan of full disk encryption and uh, LVM support. So, um, But it does have it here in Zubuntu 13.10. Some of the other things here is, of course, updated software. Again, I'm not going to go through all the default applications, but I'll just give you one example of GIMP. GIMP right now is running at 2.8.6, which should be the very latest version of GIMP. And of course, if you're using Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based um, uh, spin, such as Zubuntu, you have the option to set up uh, PPAs. A lot of the developers that put software in the Ubuntu Software Center will also have a personal package archive on Launchpad so you can actually sync that up with your system and be able to constantly have the most bleeding edge version of the software. Uh, a couple that come to mind, uh, one of which is OpenShot. It's the video editor I personally use um, for all my videos. Uh, it does have a PPA so you can put that PPA uh, up, link it to your system and I'll just be running the latest bleeding edge version of that particular application. So, and of course, again, being based on Ubuntu, you've got all the large software repositories available to you as well. In terms of a couple of little, I don't want to call them bugs, but this has existed not just in Zubuntu, but any XFCE distribution, um, video tearing. So, Zubuntu uses, uh, of course, XFCE and it has its own compositor, okay? So, XFWM4 is XFCE's own compositing manager and you've got all these options here. While compositing is enabled there is some video tearing. You'll notice it um, in HD videos. I notice it when I stream uh, off of my Amazon Prime account <clears throat> and of course I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up as I scroll here in the web browser there is slight video tearing or when I move windows around there is some checkerboarding that occurs as well. I've successfully been able to reduce the amount of checkerboarding or, or uh, video tearing that occurs, but I haven't been able to eliminate it. There's, If you were to, to search the internet, there's tons and tons of different tweaks that people tell you um, will actually eliminate it. I've yet to find anything that eliminates it completely, and I've tried uh, doing it using both the Novu driver, the open source driver, as well as the proprietary NVIDIA driver. So be aware, if you watch a lot of HD videos, currently I'm watching Underworld. Um, I love those movies. And uh, if you watch a lot of video or stream a lot of HD video, you're going to get some tearing. If that's the thing that's going to drive you crazy, you may want to consider um, using a different compositor. I also have a video on how to use Gala Window Managing Manager for XFCE uh, and that's always an option as well. So just a note to that and again that's not necessarily Zubuntu 13.10's issue that's been around in XFCE now uh, for a while. Let's see here. Um, Android support. I have a Galaxy S4 running AOSP Android. I'm able to connect it to this installation uh, able to go into Thunar and have the uh, device mounted both my internal storage and I also have a 64 gigabyte micro SD card it mounts them both fine I'm able to drag and drop files between um, my desktop as well as the phone seamlessly in Ubuntu 1204 I mainly used the Android SDK and ADB to push and pull files which was fine it was the way that I was used to doing it but it's nice to be able to just use a, a GUI and a file manager to drag and drop between my device and my desktop so that worked really really well uh, as you can tell in this particular installation it's also updated the uh, icons here these are the elementary OS icons the newest version of them so it looks great one of the other things that have been done here is they've introduced GTK 3.8 support uh, so the GTK has been updated and the GTK support, so very, very nice there. I know that's been a long-awaited um, upgrade for XFCE. I'm glad they've gone ahead and done that. Of course, it's using Thunar File Manager. It's one of my favorite file managers. It has a lot of different options. Uh, it gets the job done in a very efficient way, and I really, really like Thunar. Um, also, of course, XFCE comes with its own suite of applications. Um, things like XF Burn, which has always been very, very good. I really like XF Burn. And the other application that I really like is G Music Browser. 
those of you again who follow a lot of my videos know that I was having problems with music which is elementary OS's default music application it's a really nice aesthetically looking music app and I think it fits the styling of elementary OS very well and its design philosophy however uh, I have I don't know roughly a 70 gigabyte uh, music collection and it just really struggles to import those and anything larger than a couple of gigs however G music browser install um, you know imported my whole collection like a champ and it's very very good so who should be using Zubuntu 13.10 uh, that's kind of a loaded question because of most Linux uh, distributions are all personal preference however if you're looking for something that's fairly classic a throwback Linux desktop XFCE is probably for you um, you know this is of course menu driven with sub menus uh, a lot of point and click all done with the mouse not a lot of keyboard gestures not a lot of uh, touch screen interface options here it's all point and click so for those of you who are looking for a po point and click desktop interface XFCE is going to be for you it's very quick it's very snappy it's fairly light on the resources so if you're running a system that has say a gigabyte of RAM or even two gigs of RAM and you want to be able to not have your desktop environment eat up a lot of that memory then XFCE could possibly be for you if you're a laptop user and you're looking for something that's going to be easy on your battery um, XFCE also uh, was probably for you as well it'll be quick it'll be efficient uh, it'll be lightweight and uh, that may be for you if you like the Ubuntu repositories but don't necessarily like what's going on with the standard Ubuntu installation with Unity and Xmir and all of the things that are going on right now with Ubuntu and the canonical team they're kinda of going through some growing pains if that's not for you and you're looking for something still with the Ubuntu repos you like the idea of being able to use PPAs so on and so forth um, I highly suggest giving Zubuntu a try I think you'll find that a lot of the updates to both the interface as well as the installation itself um, will be a really nice welcomed surprise uh, I mentioned uh, Xmir <clears throat> of course Ubuntu announced that they're going to be moving to Xmir their own in-house developed display server without having to really get too far into it um, Zubuntu and a lot of the other respins have all basically stated that they do not intend on using or supporting Xmir. Uh, I read in a recent Pharonix article that Intel also announced that they will not be supporting Xmir as well. I'm assuming that's because there are uh, one uh, Intel employee, I believe, is also uh, one of the largest Wayland contributors. Um, so I'm sure that, of course, played a huge, huge part in it. So Ubuntu is now going to have to develop kernel support in-house for their own display server so this is becoming an even bigger project now than I think they even anticipated prior um, without again getting into it because that could be its that could be a whole nother video dedicated which I may do uh, completely on its own I think that I understand why they are developing their own display server I just don't know why uh, they aren't going with something like Wayland uh, however I just think that Ubuntu wants to have creative control over everything that they're doing and they don't want to have to be locked down to what the community is doing in terms of the direction that they'd like to bring all their projects um, both on mobile devices as well as the desktop or even tablets and I can I understand that to a point um, but I think that they have a lot of work ahead of them so Zubuntu has decided not to use Xmir of course they're using the uh, granddaddy display server which is Xorg and so for those of you who are familiar with Xorg, uh, no big surprises here. We're not using Xmir in Zubuntu. So that's my take as of right now in uh, Zubuntu 13.10 beta 1. I have had some crashes. Again, it's still in beta. For the most part, I think it should be fairly stable if it's reached a beta phase right now. I would, ex I would expect a lot of crashing from an alpha, but not necessarily a beta. And it's been fairly good. Um, I've had some issues with... Uh, the indicators uh, up here crashing um, I've had a couple other um, system issues I've sent some bug reports out so hopefully those can get fixed um, but for the most part it's been fairly stable if you're looking for something that you can use as a daily driver um, I think Zubuntu 13.10 beta 1 could possibly can be considered a daily driver um, on, I've again I've had this installed on my hardware now for a few days and it's been fairly good so 
that's my take right now on Zobuntu 13.10. I hope you guys enjoy, and until next time, we'll see you later.